Hey everybody, it's Paul Yokobitis from Cary State Planning back with another installment of our 366 day video challenge for 2020. And today, another Sunday, another long run day for my wife. So breakfast with the kids. Mason's got his croissant sandwich and Connor already ate some of his sandwich. So now we're just waiting for um, Alex to get done running and, and figure to be a good time to do a video. Uh, and I wanna talk about public perception and influence and um, what people think uh, as it pertains to your planning. So it usually comes in a couple forms and one is more of like a comparison or keeping up with the Joneses form where I'll have clients come in who haven't planned in a while or maybe they have a wheel-based plan and they just through research or just sort of, you know, through, you know, information gathering have determined that some of their neighbors have their homes held in a trust. And sometimes that's gonna be evident on like a tax card or in HOA records or stuff like that. And they come into the meeting and they think, well, why don't I have my uh, home held in trust? Or why would they do that and I wouldn't do it? Or is that a good idea for me? And and so that ends up being kind of a, you know, someone else is doing it. So, see Connor? So why am I not doing it? It's comparison and, and you know, trying to have what your neighbors have and that's not a silver bullet thing there isn't like a right right answer of whether you should have a house in trust or not or whether you even should even have a house in or, a, or whether you should even have a trust um the other is going to be um after something happens to you uh one of the most consistent themes that i will see with uh you know working with family members after a loved one has passed is when the, the loved one didn't plan at all and there's this regret and shame and sometimes resentment for the fact that their loved one didn't plan. Sometimes that's a deceased spouse or a parent, you know, and I'm meeting with the children and, you know, I'll ask the question of, did they have a will in place? Did they have any other estate planning in place? And you see this disappointed and, and you know, uh, ashamed look on their face and they, when they say no. And so, Obviously, outside influence shouldn't be, you know, driving your plan, but it is always a factor. Um, it can create urgency and, and you know, make things, um, you know, more of a priority or more pressing to deal with while you're here, so that you know your family doesn't have to deal with that after you're gone. Um, now, certainly, keeping up with the Joneses or just trying to have what your neighbors have is not a, a good enough reason to do that sort of planning, but. Certainly not wanting to leave a mess behind for your family after you're gone is a great reason to do planning. Um, so keep that in mind moving forward. Obviously, if you haven't planned in a while or you haven't planned at all, it's a great uh, time of year. Obviously, New Year's resolutions and early in the year to get those sorts of things done. Yeah, hold on, bud. Uh, and then, you know, if, if you're looking to have that conversation and, and strategize what planning would look like for you, you can go ahead and click the link below and get on our calendar for a private meeting uh, to discuss what planning should look like for you. Um, if you like our videos, it, you know, subscribe, look out for more in the coming days. Um, Mason, what do you want to say? Um, I only eat meat. You only eat meat? You're eating something more than meat right now, though, aren't you? Uh -huh. You're having a sandwich? Yeah. All right, Connor, what do you want to say? Um, I ate my sausage. You ate your sausage? Yeah. Was it good? Yeah. Good. Well, it's another Sunday with the Yokobitis, Yokobitis boys. Um, and we look forward to, to doing more videos this week and next week. Um, hope you all have a great Super Bowl Sunday. It's Paul from Cary State Planning.